Hey guys, so before I go back to posting my regular recipe videos and my what I eat in a day videos on this channel, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge this moment that we're in and to share what I've been learning and some resources. I have learned so, so much in the last few weeks and I know that that is an infuriating thing for some of you to hear because this is not a new problem and to be honest I kind of thought that I was woke before you know I've covered the American Justice Summit when I worked in New York City and I've read about this and I thought that I knew you know I, I thought that I had an understanding and I thought that I was an ally before and what this has taught me is that it is so much more complicated and so much more pervasive and evil and um, systemic than I ever, ever, ever could have understood. And I know that in so many ways I will never fully understand, but I just think that it's important that I first acknowledge that I see you, I hear you, I'm sorry that I that my eyes were not open, that my heart was not open, that I was not using my voice, that I was not more actively um, being anti-racist in the past, and I'm going to do better. The ways in which I'm going to do better, just for starters, first of all, I'm going to collaborate with BIPOC creators in future videos, and I'm also going to be passing the mic, so look forward on my Instagram to Instagram takeovers and shoutouts, highlights, collaborations. There's going to be a lot more collaboration and inclusivity on my platforms. In fact, I'll start right now. Here are a few Instagram accounts from vegan recipe creators that are absolutely incredible and I have them all linked down below so make sure you go follow them. Plant Crazy has some of the most drool worthy photos I've seen on the internet and incredible recipes. Sweet Potato Soul has an amazing YouTube channel and Instagram account and she specializes mostly in vegan soul food and her recipes are really healthy and really delicious. I actually tried some of her food when I was at Whole Foods. She did a collaboration last year with Whole Foods for a vegan Thanksgiving menu and it was so bomb. So definitely check her out. Rachel Lama has some of the most beautiful, colorful, vibrant recipes on the internet and I am obsessed with her YouTube channel. I Can You Can Vegan has an awesome Instagram account. My friend Nisha introduced me to this Instagram and I cannot stop drooling over these photos. You guys, that's vegan. Sweet Green Vegan has some incredible looking photos on Instagram and as you can see, really easy meal ideas that are all laid out to give you some vegan inspiration. Her photos are so beautiful, so definitely check her out. Also, Plant Based RD has some awesome recipes. And I actually learned a really cool tempeh trick from her. And I've been kind of experimenting and playing around with new ways of making tempeh because I followed her Instagram account. So, great ideas. Look at those brownies. I don't need to say anything more. Definitely go follow all of these accounts. Rachel Cargyle is another creator. And as you can see from her page, she has a very information focused page and every time I go onto her account I learn something new. She's incredible and I'm just so grateful for the amount of work that she puts into this free resource. I also really loved this post from The Conscious Kid about microaggressions and what that term actually means. This Instagram account is super, super helpful and also has a lot of information about parenting and teaching kids about racism from a really young age. So like I said, collaborating is where I will start, but I don't think this is just a right now thing. I think educating, learning, relearning, unlearning, and becoming actively anti-racist and becoming a good ally means that I will read, watch, and learn as part of a lifelong commitment. And so what I'm reading right now is The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. Highly recommend. My friend Shannon also lent me this book called Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed, and on Audible I'm reading a workbook called You, Me, and White Supremacy, and it, this is a workbook, so it's the kind of book that you should have a journal or a notebook dedicated to this book because it asks you prompts, and for 28 days you journal and you kind of work through the lessons that she teaches in the book, and it's definitely not easy. It's very challenging, it's very confronting, but I think it's important, and I will link a an interview with her in the description box below as well as a link to this book. And if you're white and you're thinking, but I'm not a racist. 
we are part of a system and implicit bias exists and you don't have to actively hate someone you don't have to be racist as a verb to be um, operating and benefiting from a system that is racist in the description box you will find a lot of links you guys a lot a lot of links and one video that i linked that i really liked is about how colorblindness promotes injustice and i think as a white community we often say things like well i don't see color i see everyone the same and this video did a really good job of explaining actually how that can promote injustice as you can tell from the title and i highly recommend it one of the most helpful and very succinct videos that i have come across about white privilege and what white privilege actually is and how systemic it is it was from this video i cannot recommend it enough my friend the same friend shannon she sent this to me and i think it's a really really good place to start if the term white privilege is confusing um and can and you know sort of makes you feel defensive watch this video and then i recommend reading her book it is on my list i can only read so many books at once but it is probably my next read because i think it is so important i also shared this on my instagram stories i will link it below the highlight down below i think this is one of those posts where a lot of times as a white community we sometimes think that we're that we mean well and we don't realize how these terms come across and i found this to be really really helpful so definitely check that out Another thing that I really appreciated that Robin D'Angelo said was that as a white community, it can be really easy to feel very, very guilty as we're learning and unlearning. It You can just feel so awful and you will feel super overwhelmed because you you want to learn everything, you want to read everything, you want to express how badly you feel about all of this and it just feels so enormous and you might not know where to start and you might feel like you don't even want to educate yourself or get involved because it just feels too enormous and too stressful and what she said is that honestly guilt isn't helping anybody but you not getting involved and not educating yourself is actually hurting people it's killing black people and people of color and so as a white community we just need to take the first step in learning something i heard recently that anna from the anna edit say was that a really good way to start is to think about what your learning style is. So if you're someone who learns best from podcasts or if you're someone who learns best from reading books, um, figure out, identify what that is and then find those resources. And for me, it is always a combination of things. And I do think that having multiple different points of view is really, really, really helpful. For me, my main way of learning is with books, just because I think that there's so much information crammed into a book that you just don't get that real deep understanding um, from a quick article or a quick Instagram post, although those are so helpful as well. And I have followed so many incredible uh, Instagram accounts recently. I will link them below from recipe developers to activists to journalists. There's so much information on Instagram and I know it can be overwhelming, but there's also so much there that is so useful and so helpful. And people have really put so much time into creating resources on Instagram for free that has that is, li is life-changing. I mean, the work that people are doing on Instagram right now is I am so, 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 so grateful. An Instagram account that I think you guys would really like is Oh Happy Danny. You guys have probably already seen some of her artwork because these a lot of a lot of these posts went viral because they're very, very concise, succinct, beautifully illustrated uh, information posts that are really, really helpful and they they share information in a way that is very digestible and very loving and as you can see, very beautiful. She's extremely talented and so she, of course, is linked down below. Just today, I came across this post from a woman named Anika and as you can see, she has an absolutely beautiful page. She is an artist and a poet and her captions are so beautiful and I know that a lot of you who follow me on Instagram, I get comments all the time about people saying that you like my long captions and that they're almost like mini blog posts and I try to make them really informative or thought-provoking or helpful in some way and hers are that way as well they are she is a beautiful writer and she's so generous with the art that she shared I mean look at her page it's absolutely incredible so definitely check her out as well 
So yes, it's important to collaborate and to support and to follow and to learn and to read. It's also important if you can to donate and some places that you can donate are going to be linked below. I keep saying that everything is linked below you guys, but Black Lives Matter is a great one. The NAACP is a great one. And there's also this article that I linked that has a list of a lot more resources, including places to donate, but also podcasts and so many other useful resources. So you guessed it, it's linked below. So I hope that it's helpful for you. And again, I just wanna say that I'm sending all of you love and I know that love isn't enough. I know that just well wishes and sending love is, is nice, but I know that there needs to be more. And I am telling you that I am going to use my voice. I am going to learn, I am gonna be different. And I am, I don't know how to wrap that up. I don't know what else to say. I just, I needed to say this before I went back to posting recipes. I love posting recipes. I love what I do. I'm so grateful for all of you, but this needed to be said first. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry I don't have a better ending to this video, but to be honest with you guys, it was a hard video for me to film and I felt like everything I was saying was wrong and I wasn't being specific enough and I didn't know what to say and that's because this is a difficult thing to talk about and I think that it's important for me to acknowledge that so that you know that it's okay if you also feel that way and you're afraid to say the wrong thing because you will say the wrong thing. I have said the wrong thing. I have put my foot in my mouth and I've had to apologize and it sucks and it's hard and it's complicated and it's it's difficult, but that's okay. My friend Grace says, we can do, we can do hard things. And I tell myself that all the time. We can do hard things. We can become anti-racist. We can become better allies and stand with our BIPOC friends and family with love and solidarity and, and become the best allies that we can be, even though it's hard. So I just wanted to tell, tell you guys that and to all of my BIPOC viewers, I just wanted to say that I hear you. I know that you have been in pain. I know that it's not fair and I am, I am committing to doing everything that I can to be more inclusive, more collaborative, to become a better ally and to stand with you in solidarity. I love you guys all so much. Thank you so much for watching again and I will see you in a video very soon.